So welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Brandon Grant. I'm the Sales and Marketing Director here at CoreWorks. And uh, today we're going to be discussing version 5.5, Build 5, uh, the release webinar. Uh, so we're going to go over the new features in this release. Um, have quite a bit to cover today, um, some major features and some hopefully uh, really useful things for you guys to take advantage of uh, in your installations, you know, starting uh, hopefully today, uh, once you kind of see what's, what's out there and what's available. So first off, um, just wanted to kind of mention the outline for these build release webinars. Typically we'll do a very short PowerPoint presentation just kind of give you an overview of what's going on. Uh, and then we'll actually do a live demonstration of those new features. Um, so this will be specific to version 5.5 and build 5. And then at the very end of the webinar, I'll go through any questions that you have sent over. Uh, if you see in that go to webinar box, you'll see a questions box. Go ahead and type your questions in there. And you should be able to, um, you know, post your question and then I'll circle back and I'll try to answer as many of those as I can at the end of the webinar. Um, as always, if you do have questions or there's something I didn't get to or you want more information on, uh, definitely feel free to reach out to us. Uh, you can always email sales at coworks.com. Uh, you can email support at coworks.com for tech support. Or if you want to give us a call, just the main number 407-248-1481, extension 2, will get you on the line for us. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive in here. So version 5.5, build 5, um, release summary, we added 28 new features, 42 fixes, and six miscellaneous features. And the six miscellaneous features are typically like smaller kind of uh, one-off features that we may have added by someone's request or uh, might be someone, something that we found internally that we decided to add to make things a little easier. So first things first, uh, we'll kind of go through the integration updates. Um, so the big one here is uh, we now support uh, the Kaseya BMS integration. Uh, so we actually wrote a brand new integration with Kaseya BMS. Uh, so for those of you in the MSP space, um, a lot of you had been asking and requesting that. Uh, Kaseya had actually written an integration in QuoteWorks originally and we decided to take it over. So we've actually completely rewritten it. Um, it's now written and supported on our side of things. Uh, so we'll connect it directly to your Kaseya installation so that you can now create opportunities search for contacts, all that information. And we'll go into more detail on that here in just a few minutes. Uh, for Autotask users, uh, we actually added some new features. Um, I'd highly suggest going to the updates page, checking those out. Uh, but basically, there's some new mappings for like your product sources. Uh, there's some category support for your product uh, database in QuoteWorks. Uh, and I'll kind of run through those as well. Uh, for ConnectWise users, um, we are now writing the vendor part number over to your ConnectWise bundles. Um, so when QuoteWorks creates the ConnectWise bundle in ConnectWise from QuoteWorks. If there's a vendor part number that's been set in QuoteWorks, that'll actually carry over to ConnectWise as well. Um, that had been uh, requested a few times on the, I think on the forums. And so that's now in version uh, 5, 5, build 5 here. Uh, for you MSCRM users, uh, we now added a um, auto link. Um, so on that links tab in QuoteWorks, when you create the opportunity in MSCRM from QuoteWorks, we'll actually link directly to that MSCRM quote as well. So we'll put a link in there, not just to the opportunity, but to the quote as well. So just a nice little shortcut and something that we do already do for like Kaseya and for ConnectWise and for Autotask and for Salesforce. So um, now that'll be in there for MSCRM as well. Uh, those of you that are using Act for Web version 22, um, that's now fully supported in Build 5 here. So if you've been waiting on that, uh, you can update today and you'll be fully active. Um, I believe beta support was um, already in there for, from Build 4, Build 3, uh, but this is fully supported. So everything's been checked out. So everything should be good to go there. Uh, and for those of you that are using Zoho CRM in Australia, we added officially added support for that. I think it was working, but there was just some some issues with some of the like the time zone things and currency and things like that. So that's all been um, figured out and uh, adjusted. And so now there's full support for that. So um, that's available to you as well. All right. Um, so the first thing I wanted to talk about is the Kaseya integration. So the Kaseya integration um, it follows very similar to a lot of our other integrations. It's gonna have multiple integration points. So you're going to be able to search and select contacts, um, create an update when close opportunities in Kaseya. Uh, we'll also create the Kaseya quotes. That's pretty important since the line items from the QuoteWorks document need to carry over to the Kaseya quote uh, in the opportunity. So we'll actually create that quote and that's where the line item information will be. 
Um, we also will be able to use the Kaseya BMS product and services databases inside of QuoteWorks. So if you want to link, if you've already set up your items inside of Kaseya in those products and services databases, we can link directly to those and pull those in directly into QuoteWorks. You can also schedule follow-up activities in Kaseya as well, um, and we'll run through some of this today. Uh, for those of you that are really interested in getting the deep dive into the Kaseya BMS integration, we'll actually be sending out an invite to uh, the a full integration webinar um, probably later today. Um, so look for that in your inbox if you are interested in signing up for that webinar where we'll actually spend a, an entire webinar just focusing on that integration. Uh, one thing to keep in mind about the Kaseya BMS integration, it does require the corporate edition. So if you're on the pro edition, you will need the corporate edition in order to use that. So just something to keep in mind there. All right, so uh, next, one thing that we had was the uh, Ingram Micro Quote Importer. So this is something that we added, um, and this will actually show up on the grid toolbar in your QuoteWorks installation, so I'll show you where you can find that. Uh, but this will actually allow you to search for a specific quote number from Ingram Micro. So if you're working with your Ingram Micro rep and they've created a quote for you uh, in their system, you can actually get that quote number, copy and paste it, and put it into QuoteWorks, and we'll be able to import that quote. You can also browse for any quote that's been created within the last 45 days and import that directly into QuoteWorks as well. Um, this is required. Uh, this is an add-on to the real-time module, so you have to have the real-time module in order to do this. You obviously have to have an Ingram Micro account as well. And there is some setup involved with this uh, since you need to um, essentially create a kind of like a imp quote importer account with Ingram Micro. Uh, those instructions are in the help file. Um, I'll kind of briefly touch on them today. Uh, but you can set that up in your uh, in your installation. All right. Um, one of the big features we added to this installation is the ability to apply multi-line changes. So this is something that um, a lot of people have been asking for for a long time. So, you know, previously you were always able to like edit the quantity on multiple line items, or change the price, or change the cost. But if you wanted to set the vendor to multiple line items, or if you wanted to update the description of multiple line items, or add custom text information to multiple line items at once, it wasn't a, it wasn't a really easy way to do that. So that's where this apply multi-line changes feature comes into play. This will actually allow you to select multiple lines and then apply changes to various fields. Uh, there's essentially a drop down where you select which column you want to make the changes to, and then you basically change the text or the, the number information that you want to adjust. So I'll walk through all that today so you can see how it works. It's very, very easy to use and uh, very simple to, uh, to make those adjustments. And then our new request payment option. Um, so if you're using Quote Valet, um, when you set a deposit, you now have the option to allow the customer to pay the full amount or the remaining balance um, at any time. So basically a customer can be prompted to select either pay the deposit or pay the full amount of the document. So um, it just gives a little more flexibility if you want them to be able to make those adjustments kind of on the fly. Maybe they're paying, maybe they're planning on just paying the deposit and you negotiate with them, they're actually going to pay the full amount. You don't have to issue a new quote or anything. They can actually just select the other option. So uh, it'll make a little more sense once I show that one to you, but um, it's a nice little feature that's in there for you Quote Valet users. Um, some new auto task integration features. Um, we've added some new mappings uh, for the you auto task users where uh, the categories folder is now available for your auto task products database. So if you've integrated QuoteWorks with your auto task products database, uh, there'll actually be a new um, categories option there and that'll break everything down into folders. Um, we also added a new description field in the opportunity window. So when you save your quotes and quote works and we go to create that auto task opportunity, you'll see that new description field in that um, save, save quote as window. We also added the auto task quote URL to the links tab. Um, so before we just had the opportunity and the links directly to the contacts. So now we added the quote URL, so a nice little shortcut there as well. Uh, and then we also added some additional mappings when you are using the products and services databases where you can map additional fields from the auto task product sources, such as like the um, the categories can be mapped now. There's a course item type field that can be mapped. So there's a couple different fields that are available for you and uh, we'll kind of walk through some of those today. And then some changes to the um, grid navigation, I'm calling it kind of like an Excel-like grid navigation. So when you kind of maneuver around Excel, 
a lot of you are probably very familiar with using enter and tab and you know the left and right and up and down arrows to kind of move around the document so we've um we've changed some of that to make things a little easier um, one of the biggest changes is going to be something very subtle that you may not even notice um, if we hadn't mentioned it, but just um, selecting in a field will actually show, will actually highlight the text for you. Um, and then you can use like the home and the end um, buttons to move the cursor to the beginning and the end of the text. Um, you also have the option to move uh, vertically uh, through any of the fields using tab, uh, or I'm sorry, enter to move vertically and then tab to move horizontally. So um, that's all kind of been updated and things run a little smoother because sometimes if there's text in there um, and you were using enter, it would just bring you to the next line instead of letting you move outside of the uh, the field that you're in. So now you'll actually be able to move field. So we'll go through all that here and that'll make a little more sense once we actually uh, walk through that. So as always, um, we have a ton of resources available on the website. So if you do have questions, definitely feel free to give us a call, send us an email. Um, we have a ton of videos uh, on our website as well. So those are always available for free so you can access those for specific features. Um, and anything that is added to QuoteWorks is always added to the help file as well. So you can do a search in there if you want to see more information about a specific feature. And then as always, um, our live and recorded webinars are on our website as well as our users form. Uh, the user Users form is a great place to uh, meet with other QuoteWorks users where you guys can share ideas. Uh, this is also a great place where development goes to get feature requests. Um, it's actually a feature request section in the users form. So make sure you're signed up there and check it out. And you know, if you do have feature requests or you see someone that has a feature request that's similar to yours, make sure you're upvoting those and just kind of piggybacking on those types of things. And then as always, um, make sure you're connected with us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn. Um, make sure you're connected with us there. That way you're always up to date on kind of what we're working on, what's going on, um, anything like that, any kind of announcements we have, any feature updates, any webinars, those types of things. We always uh, try, to, try to announce things and um, stay pretty active on there as well. Okay. So let's go ahead and switch over to QuoteWorks now. Let me just move things over here. Okay. Okay. So the first thing I want to talk about is the Ingram Micro Quote Importer. So for those of you that are using Ingram Micro um, as one of the distributors, um, you'll see once you've set up the integration, you'll actually have this little Ingram Micro icon on your grid toolbar. So it's going to be right over here. Now to set this up, you do actually have to set up the account. So you'll want to follow the instructions in the QuoteWorks help file. Um, and then once you do that in QuoteWorks, you'll need to go to Tools, Options, and then go to your Real-Time tab. So right here, we're going to go to our Real-Time tab and then go to our real-time setup. And then you're just gonna click on your Ingram Micro tab. And down here, this quote importing, you'll need to fill out that information. You won't get this information until you go and sign up with Ingram Micro um, through, the, through the, uh, their uh, quote importer portal. Uh, and to do that, just go to the QuoteWorks help file. There's instructions in there and like where exactly to go, what you need to fill out, all that information. Just follow those steps. And once you follow those steps, you'll get that those credentials. Drop those credentials in QuoteWorks and then your Ingram Micro Quote Importer will be available. Okay, so let's go ahead and open the window here. So this is what the window is going to look like. And it's going to have a couple options for you. First one is if you want to do a search by a specific quote number. So if you have an Ingram Micro Quote number, and just so happen to have one and we search for it that will find that specific quote number from ingram micro and let you pull that into your quote so you'll see i've found my quote and then down here at the bottom we can see all the information and then we can just click on import and that'll import it directly into quoteworks so really really simple um, not much to it honestly once it's set up um, it's going to be ready for you to use uh, immediately essentially so that's the first way that you can pull in quotes from Ingram Micro. The second way is just kind of browsing what's available. So if we again click on our Ingram Micro button here, this will open up the Ingram Micro quote importer. You can see there's also an option to request quotes from Ingram Micro. And this will actually go out and find any quotes that have been created within the last 45 days for your company. 
So if we click on one here, and we'll just click on this first one, that'll actually open up this quote. And same thing, you'll see the line item information, and then you'll import it into QuoteWorks. So let's go ahead and we'll just grab this one and choose import, and it added it to our document. Now you'll notice a couple of things um, when it's added to the document. Your costs will be populated here. So what it costs you to purchase this item from Ingram Micro, that's what will populate as a unit cost. The unit price will essentially be left blank, or if you have your default price modifier set, we'll use that. So for instance, in my installation, I have a default price modifier of a markup of 10%. So QuoteWorks uses that markup of 10% and sets my price. But if you wanted to go in and adjust your prices or your markups like you typically would, you'll have that option. So very, very easy to use. And like I said, the um, probably the most time consuming part is just the setup, which should only take a few minutes through the Ingram Micro website. Just um, go in there, fill out a couple of um, info, a couple items. Um, sometimes you might have to wait 24 to 48 hours for Ingram Micro to verify your account, uh, but typically they've been pretty quick with it. So just uh, keep that in mind, but that's something that you can set up and you can start using today once you're updated to version 5.5 or build five. Okay, so pretty straightforward with the Ingram Micro Quote Importer. Next thing we wanna talk about is the applying multiple line changes. So since we've added a bunch of items on here, this will be a good example. So in QuoteWorks, we've added the ability to make changes to multiple line items that we kind of talked about in the PowerPoint. So the way we can do that is if you select multiple lines, let's just select these first four lines here. And we say, you know what, they don't have an item type. So I wanna set these items with an item type. So the way I can do that is a couple different ways. I can use this shortcut icon on my grid toolbar, or you can right click and under your edit menu, you'll see there's an apply multi-line changes. So you can use either one. They're both gonna bring up the same little window here. So it's gonna open up this apply multi-line change window. And then you would simply select which column you wanna make a change to. So like I said, we wanted to do item type, but you can see there's a variety of other columns and you can use the, your keyboards shortcuts. So if I just type I on my keyboard, that'll bring me to the eyes and then I can select item type. And then I can choose to type in here. So if I wanted to call this, uh, we'll just call these, let's call them product and then click apply, and it'll apply product to those line items. Um, same thing, if you click on the dropdown, you can actually see what options are available. So if you don't wanna free type in there, if you wanna say, okay, it's actually gonna be services, we can change it to service and click apply, and it'll apply to those. Um, the items don't have to be contiguous either. So if you wanna select one item here, one item here, and one item here, and same thing, go to multi-line changes, and maybe we wanna update the vendor. So we'll click V on my keyboard. That'll bring me down to vendor. And maybe I just wanna set the vendor to, we'll just call it um, vendor three for our example and click apply. And then you'll see here, my vendors have been, uh, my vendors have been updated there. So um, really, really useful so that you can make changes to multiple line items at once, um, especially if you wanted to update descriptions uh, your prices, anything like that. So there's a variety of columns that you can make changes to. If you click on the drop down, you'll see all those and they're simply in alphabetical order. Um, so you have access to all of that. Um, this is also a really useful feature to use in conjunction with the select special. So if you're not sure which items you wanted to select, you could come in here and go to like edit select special. And then we'll say, you know, our description begins with Cisco. Quoteworks will highlight that for me. I can then say, okay, on those Cisco items, I want to apply multiple changes and I want to change the vendor to you know, Cisco system and click apply and it'll let me change those items. So there's a lot of flexibility and a lot of different ways to use it, um, but it's just really nice to be able to uh, make those adjustments. You'll also see as you make changes, Quoteworks will actually let you know, say, hey, we made these changes. Um, this was applied to however many lines if you do something that you don't wanna do, the undo redo is available for you as well, so you can always undo the last change um, up to 10 changes uh, in the system. Okay, so kind of um, on that same, kind of in that same feature set, uh, we added some new functionality to the quantity field. 
So now when you click in the quantity field, um, one of the nice changes is it automatically highlights the quantity for you. So you could simply just type in there the new quantity, click enter, and it'll go around to the next one. So if you wanted to go through and quickly make adjustments to your quantities, you can do that without having to click enter and then try to go in there and then select the quantity and make a change and so on. So um, that's one of the just the kind of like um, grid navigation changes that were made in this release that should hopefully make things a little easier as you're going through. In addition to that, we also added the ability to add um, to the quantity. So for instance, if you're in a quantity field and you use the plus plus, and then let's say we do five and then click enter, Coreworks will add that amount of numbers uh, or that amount of quantity to that field. So it uh, makes it really easy to make adjustments really fast to your items. So if you need to change the quantity on multiple items, you can do that. In addition, we also have the ability to change it by like a percentage. So if you wanted to increase it by 10%, say, we can do the same thing, plus plus 10%, and it'll add 10% there. So really easy to go through and just kind of make those adjustments to your items as needed. Now, if we select a couple items here, if you right click, if you right click, you'll see the um, edit quantity is no longer available. So that's actually been rolled into that apply multi-line changes. So for those of you that were using that functionality, um, you won't see that anymore. That apply multi-line changes will be there instead. And when you choose that you can actually click Q and it's going to be the quantity base column if you want to adjust the quantity and then if you want to change the quantity to something let's say for these three lines we want to change it to six we click apply and it'll adjust it to six and you can see here even in the shortcuts it'll actually tell you that it'll support those um, those simple calculations so if we wanted to multiply by three we could use a little multiplication symbol do three click apply and it'll change those three. So same thing if we wanted to deduct 12 of them, we can deduct 12. So um, you can use the apply multi-line changes for applying the edits to your quantities for multiple lines instead of just the um, having to go one by one or instead of that old functionality where it was just you were only able to edit the quantity. Now you can edit multiple columns on your document at once instead of having to uh, instead of having to go one by one. So, um, and then uh, I see there's about four or five questions asking essentially the same thing. Um, yeah, that plus plus, that minus minus, um, that does work in other fields as well. So if you use that on the, like, the unit price or the unit cost, that will actually add 10% or deduct 10% from the um, from the unit price or the unit cost. So you can use those, those shortcuts there as well. That, that'll work in, uh, in those fields also. Okay. So let's go into, um, well, well, this will be a good kind of segue. We'll work on the um, Excel-like navigation here. So um, what I mean by that is now you can use like tab to switch your columns. So if you look at my screen here, I can use my left and right arrows and my tab to actually move through the cells a lot easier. Um, so that was one of the big changes we made just so it makes it a little easier to navigate around. So you might be in a specific row and you just needed to update, you know, my cost here and then I want to do the next one. And before you might have to hit enter or when you hit enter, um, I think it actually went to the right. And when you hit tab, it would also go to the right. So now enter, I'll actually move it down. So you can actually go through and make changes to your various fields a lot easier than before. So we just kind of made things a little bit easier. And you'll see as I'm selecting the various columns or the various um, text in the columns, um, when, I, when I get there, it actually highlights it for you so you can make that change. So I could just update it very easily. So um, really easy to make those changes. And same thing goes with like your item type fields. You know, if you're in the item type and you want to type in there or move to them, you can do that. If you want to adjust, adjust your price modifiers, your unit pricing, anything like that, you can make those changes. So it's really just a little easier to move things around. The other thing that's going to be useful is when you click in the description field, you can see it, it highlights your entire description. Um, from here, you have a couple options. If you click home on your clipboard, it'll bring your cursor to the beginning of the text, or if you click end, it'll actually bring it to the end of the text instead. Um, so instead of you having to go in here and like double click and then start typing, you can actually use those shortcuts to move the cursor around as well. And then once you're done, you can actually just move to the next one or you can go up to a different one and make changes. 
and same thing if you click on end that'll bring you to the end here so if you want to add any text you can do that so just trying to make things a little bit easier um, and you can tab out of there um, to to get out of the description like once you start typing um, and then you can move to the next one if you want to so um, we just added some of that kind of functionality in here uh, might take just a minute to get used to because it, it operates a little differently than what you're used to um, but it is it does make actually maneuvering around the document a lot easier um, once you kind of understand what's happening and what we're doing in there so um, that's automatically in there there's nothing to add or anything like that once you update to version 5.5 build 5 uh, that functionality just automatically becomes available for you okay so going now to our deposit required so i'm going to switch to quotes over here just so we have a um, quote already uploaded um, but you'll see down at the bottom left we have our deposit required field and if we click on that this will show you a list of all the deposit options for this particular document. Uh, and I've set mine up for the full amount. So basically whatever I have here as a total, that's what the customer has to pay. However, a lot of people do provide deposits. You want the customer to provide a deposit. So let's say it's gonna be 20%. So it's gonna be 20% of the document. And then down here at the bottom, you'll see there's a checkbox that says, in quote value, allow customers to pay full amount slash remaining balance at any time. All this does is basically activate the option so that the customer, instead of having to, or only having the option to pay the deposit amount, they could pay the full amount of the document as well. So that just makes things a little easier for the customer so that if they just, you know, maybe there's a discount if they pay it all up front, you know, instead of having to pay just the deposit first and then you're gonna, you know, let them finance or something like that giving the customer the option to actually pay the full amount um, is always a good thing but you can always turn it off and so when we do that we'll go ahead and we'll click OK and so we'll see here this is the deposit amount and then this is the total amount and let's go ahead and upload our quote to quote LA we'll save our document here and then when our customer accepts the quote so we sent the quote to the customer customer signed off that everything looks good and they click to accept once they get the acceptance page then they'll have the option on the when they click pay now that'll actually bring them to the payment screen um, I'll make this a little wider so you can see here um, that'll bring them to the payment screen and then they can pay either the deposit or they can just pay the full amount uh, and what's really nice this works if you're doing uh, like partial payments so maybe the customer is going to pay 20% now but then you're gonna have them pay the rest afterwards that's fine they could actually pay the deposit and then you can submit another payment request to the payment options have them pay again so if you want them to pay the full amount you can do that or they can click or the deposit um, they can do that and then you'll see here as we go through deposit due you know there's the convenience fee since they're paying with credit card and that's the total or when they pay full amount it actually recalculates that convenience fee for you so if you're using that functionality that's all in there that that's going to be supported so um just gives you a little bit more flexibility uh for doing that in um in quote works here and then same thing if they select like ach they can pay the deposit or the, they can pay the full amount so whichever payment option they select uh, you can have it set up where they can either choose to uh, to make a, um, just the deposit payment or the full amount. So um, that functionality will work for you immediately. There's not really anything you need to set up in QuoteWorks. It's just that checkbox. If you do want to set that as your default option, um, so right now I just kind of have it set off set as a one-off um, by clicking on my deposit required button, and then you'll see there. So allow customer to pay that full amount remaining balance. You can set that under your tools options and then under your deposit amount here so this little uh little ellipsis button there if we click on that that's where you can set your default deposit amount and that's where that checkbox will be set so if you set that here then this will be the new default for your company moving forward your reps can always uncheck it you can always uncheck it as you want but that will be how you can set the default so um, again that just gives you the flexibility where you can accept the deposit or the full amount of the document instead so it's up to you um, like I said, you can you can de default it. You can it can be a one-off. It's however you want to use that functionality. So 
Um, that's available to, uh, to you if you're using Quote Valley and if you're accepting payments through Quote Valley as well. Okay, and I think that's all for that one. Okay, so next thing I wanted to talk about was the Kaseya integration. Um, so if we go into, uh, once that quote's been accepted, so we'll start with this one. Um, so the Kaseya integration, um, I'm not gonna go into the full setup. We're gonna do a webinar next week on the Kaseya integration um, about the setup, about all the, um, all the features, but we're just gonna kind of cover the basics of it. Um, that it should answer most everyone's questions. So first things first, let me go ahead and set up as I can say as my integration here. Okay, so it's gonna have a lot of the same functionality that you're used to. So you'll be able to look up your contacts by account name. So we'll log in and we'll get that. So you can search by account name, first name, last name, phone, email. Um, and just like the other integrations, a lot of the integration is gonna happen on the save. So on the save is where we're going to trigger a lot of that work. So we can create or update that sales opportunity, create that link document, create the follow-up activity, create the one-off activity as well. Um, follow-up activity is just like a reminder. So if you want to schedule a reminder for yourself or for someone else, you can do that. And the one-off activity just allows you to create more than one. So you'll have that option to be able to do that, um, to create that functionality in Kaseya. So you can create that opportunity, create that Kaseya quote at that point. Um, all that will carry over. Additionally, um, when you create the opportunity, we'll, we'll use the auto links in QuoteWorks. So when you click on the links tab here, um, we'll actually have that linked to your Kaseya integration or to your Kaseya installation rather. So you'll be able to view that sold to or shipped to or bill to contact information. You'll be able to view that opportunity, that quote in Kaseya. Um, you'll have all those shortcuts just like um, a lot of the other CRMs and PSA packages that we integrate with. Uh, additionally, we do support the Kaseya product and services. Um, so if you go into your setup product sources, click on new, um, you'll see there's an option for Kaseya products and Kaseya services. So you can link directly to those product sources in QuoteWorks. Um, and when you link to it, I'll do it real quick because it doesn't take long. Um, you'll see a lot of the fields are already mapped for you, but there's some other fields that are available that are, if they're important to you, you can go ahead and map them in QuoteWorks. Um, and then once you're done, and we'll go ahead and we'll just finish here. Click close. That database will actually show up in your product lookup window, so you'll be able to search for items. So. Um, so kind of re quick recap on that. You can search for contacts uh, and pull them directly into QuoteWorks. We can create, update, and win slash close opportunities. You can also mark opportunities as lost in QuoteWorks or in um, Kaseya from QuoteWorks as well. Uh, we will also create and update the Kaseya quote. So we'll actually write the line item information from QuoteWorks directly into the Kaseya quote. And then uh, you can also access your product and services databases from Kaseya directly from QuoteWorks as well. So you have access to all that functionality. Um, the only thing you need to have is the corporate edition of QuoteWorks and obviously an active account um, with Kaseya BMS in order to, uh, to use that functionality. Uh, the setup is pretty straightforward. Um, like I said, there's actually a couple videos on our website that have integration instructions for setting up the integration, for using the integration, kind of all those integration points. Um, like I said, we'll be doing a live webinar next week um, on that integration and go through everything and detail all of that out for you. Okay, the next thing we wanted to look at here was the um, just some of the new functionality we added for Autotask. Um, so one of the things that we did for Autotask was actually add, let me just switch my uh, contact manager here. Um, we added the ability for Autotask products to be generated with folders. Um, so there's actually no setup involved with that, which is really cool, um, where this will actually show you um, these different folders and they kind of break down um, for you the different categories that you have set up in Autotask. So these are actually using those Autotask categories as subfolders in QuoteWorks. So it helps you just kind of organize things. Um, there's no functionality, there's no setup for you to use this. You just have, you can just start using it immediately um, with the Autotask products. And like I said, it just kind of breaks it down using those categories folders that you have um, set up in Autotask products. So I guess the one um, 
thing that can be kind of confusing is that this functionality is in quote works, but we are just reading from what's in auto task. So if you see that your category folders in quote works aren't the way you want them to be, you actually need to go into auto task and adjust those settings because we're just reading from what's there. We're just pulling from those category uh, settings in auto task. So just something to keep in mind for that. And then for auto task, um, we added some new mappings under your products, set up product sources here. We actually added a new mapping for the QuoteWorks item type. Um, so that can be mapped directly to your item type in QuoteWorks. Um, the item type field, you know, for ConnectWise, AutoTask, Kaseya, um, even, even like Salesforce, um, those are really important fields because that's when we write the line item information back into those programs. That's how we determine if it's product, if it's service, if it's labor, if it's another chart, you know, whatever it is. Um, so it's really important that that's mapped. So um, there's new functionality in this mapping that gives you um, a lot more flexibility to kind of uh, determine what's going to be set there. Um, there's also a new category field. Um, so we don't typically use the category field in QuoteWorks. It's just an additional field that we have. Um, but if you want to map it in AutoTask, that is available for you. Um, and then same thing with the item types. So those fields are available for you now if you want to map those. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to point out was the What's our name field? Oh, um, yeah, we don't have a direct mapping for the name field, so that's typically going to default to your custom text. So once, if you're using that name field in the Autotask products um, setup, um, our default, I believe, is custom text to one, um, but you can change it if you need to. So just keep that in mind. Um, these are just the defaults that come with the installation, but you can change those around as needed. Just remember that the QuoteWorks manufacturer part number field is the default part number in QuoteWorks. So just keep that in mind if you're you know, going there and start making changes. But um, those mappings just give you a little bit more flexibility and make sure that the systems are reading properly. You know, When you're pulling something from Autotask and bringing that into QuoteWorks, those items are coming over properly. Okay, um, let me just double check here, but I think we covered everything wanted to on those. So um, yeah, it looks like um, covered Pretty much the major features of the um, of Build 5. Um, I definitely encourage you to go check out the updates page in QuoteWorks um, on our website. Um, for those of you who haven't been there in a while, um, if you go to our website and just go to support and then updates, you'll see our updates page here. And then you can click on view feature list. And we actually write out all the features that are available in this release. Um, so it's really easy for you to kind of see what's been added. Um, there's search functionality, so if there's a specific feature you're looking for, you can see that as well. Um, additionally, on our customer area page here, you can see kind of like what's new. So as we add new webinars, um, as we have like feature spotlights, um, as we have videos for things, um, all that will be kind of posted here. So this is kind of like a rolling feed of what's going on, what's being added in QuoteWorks. So it's always a great place to um, kind of see information in here as well. So definitely make sure you're kind of checking that out from uh, from time to time as well. So, um, all right, well, I think that's everything for today. Um, I know we have uh, quite a few questions that we're gonna go through. So I'm going to stop the recording and I'll start answering those questions. So if any of you um, posted a question, just um, hang tight and I'll start going through those. Uh, for anyone else, if you don't have any questions, you know, thank you for attending today. Uh, we did record this session, so we'll be emailing out the link once we get it on our website here in the next couple of days. Um, so if you missed something or wanted to see something again, uh, we'll be sending it out to you here in the next couple of days. So um, thanks again, everyone. And uh, if you have questions, just stick around and I'll start going through those.